Okay, guys, we are gonna solve our first uh, reheat problem for ranking cycle. We're gonna introduce two concepts. The first one is the approach temperature difference, which we discussed in our last video, and um, the actual cycle indicated by the isentropic efficiency of the turbines. Well, we have, um, we're gonna read our problem and at the same time we're gonna draw our diagram and uh, we're gonna draw it in two ways one will be a uh, schematic and then a TS so first of all we said that we have a pressure boiler of 10 megapascal so that means that we have a boiler And that boiler, it says that it gets its heat from a high temperature reservoir that is at 115 degrees Celsius. And it says that the approach temperature difference that we have is at the hot end. And it's 15 degrees. Okay, the pressure here is 10 megapascal so we draw this steam to a high pressure turbine And the high pressure turbine has an isentropic efficiency of 85%. So we draw this um, steam out of the turbine at 750 kilopascal. Then we reheat it in the same boiler with the same temperature approach and then we introduce it to a low pressure turbine the efficiency of the low pressure turbine is 80% and then we go to a condenser Which operates at 10 kilopascal and then we have a pump so if we name if we number our circuit this is one two three four five and six if we draw this on a TS diagram we're gonna have something like this is not to scale remember We have our boiler, this is 815, and this will be 800. six we have straight lines here but remember that since we have a 
as entropic efficiency we are actually going to be something like this okay so what we are asked to get is our um, efficiency efficiency of our cycle and um, we recall that this efficiency this our thermal efficiency will be the network divided by Q in. In this case, our network will be the work provided by turbine 1 plus turbine 2 minus work of the pump. And Q in, the total heat that we are adding is the Q in the boiler plus the Q in the reheater. Okay? We know that each of these components, we're going to solve it by um, first law analysis for open systems. We know how to do that. We discussed that in detail in the, in the, in the presentations and in the first two uh, problems. So what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, explain it. You can check this with your tables and um, this is uh, going in, so this can, I, I'm going to show the solution step by step, but you're going to need to find out the properties in your tables and do the interpolations and such. Okay. We know that the work at turbine 1 from our diagram, we know that this H3 minus H4 actual. We know it is actual because we have our isentropic efficiency H3 minus H4 actual H3 minus H4S. This comes from the definition of uh, isentropic efficiency for a turbine. Similarly, second turbine will be H5 minus H6, again actual since we have the isentropic efficiency of the second turbine to be H5 minus H6 actual, H5 minus H6 isentropic. And the work of the pump, since we have 100% isentropic efficiency, we just H2 minus H1. As for the heat, heat in the boiler, applying first law for open systems and neglecting any work that can be done in the heat exchanger would be H3 minus H2. Q in the reheater will be H5 minus H4 actual. Okay. So it only ends with um, the, the, this is the solution to the problem. Remember that the efficiency, which is what we are looking for, is the network divided by the total Q in okay so what do we need to do is um, just to find out um, the properties to find properties but this is the solution there is just mechanics uh, properties at each state so state one we have two properties, x1 equals 0, p equal 10 kilopascal. So a table A5 
we have five H1 to be 191.81 kilojoules per kilogram and volume 1 will be 0 0.0010 cubic meters per kilogram this is the per state state 2 we know that H2 is equal to H1 plus the work of the pump and we know that we can approximate the work of the pump as volume 1 P2 minus P1 remember that the liquid is incompressible so we can use this expression and um, substituting we will have this value to be just H2 equals 201.90 kilojoules per kilogram. As for state 3, we have pressure is equal to 10 megapascal. And temperature 3, we can get it from our definition of approach and this definition of approach will be um, th minus the approach temperature in the boiler so this will be 815 celsius minus 15 if we remember that the kelvin degree is the same size of the celsius degree or the kelvin not the kelvin degree have 800 degrees so this makes a superheated vapor so we need to look at table a6 and we will find that h3 4140.5 kilojoules per kilogram and s3 it's equal to 7.4085 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. This is important because that's the, ent the, the, the entrance to state 4S. In this state 4S, we know the pressure, 750 kilopascal. We know that S3 equals S4, and this is 7.4085 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Okay, since Sg at 750 is smaller than S4, we know that this is superheated vapor. So again, we go to table A6 and the value interpolation we find that H4S let me just make this a little bit clearer so when you study, you can follow it. Um, H4S is equal to 3050.4 kilojoules per kilogram now state for actual we're gonna um, use this definition we know that the 
efficiency, centripetal efficiency of turbine one is 0.85. And we know this relation. So we're solving for H4 actual. We have that H4 actual is equal to 3000. 210 kilojoules per kilogram. So these are the first four states. We move to state five. And for this state five, sorry, there's a mistake here. It's not 750 should be 800 and I think it's wrong also in your in the statement yeah please this 800 hey, yeah I, I moved it to be 800 so you don't need to, to double interpolate so sorry about this confusion the values I'm getting here are for 800, so they are correct. Eight hundred. So pressure is eight hundred, and temperature. It's 800 as well. This is kilopascal. This is Celsius. This is superheated. So again, table A6. H6 is equal to, sorry, H5. So H5 it's equal to 4,157 and S5 is equal to 8.60 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin kilojoules per kilogram now state 6 S, we know that pressure is 10 kilopascal. We don't have any pressure drop in the condenser. S6 is equal to S5, which is 8.6061 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Again, this is a superheated vapor. Since S6 is greater than Sg at 10 kilopascal, and by interpolation, H6s is 2747.4, and again by using the centric of efficiency 3.8 and solving for H6 actual, we find that H6 actual is 3029.3 kilojoules per kilogram. <clears throat> you can just substitute in the first equations and get um, work of turbine 1, turbine 2, and the pump, 
kill the water, kill the heat, and get the efficiency. We should give you 41.61%. Please check your numbers and um, do your math. This is a very good way of understanding. Okay, thank you very much, guys.